If you're like me and you have a bunch of old technology, you might have an old router or two laying around. Now, for me, the old router that I have, a WRT54G V3. Now, the version is actually important in this case because I think they still use the exact same brand name, uh, well, and have for many, many years. But this V3 had a massive four megabytes of ROM, so for the firmware, for the software, 16 megabytes of RAM for actually running the operating system, and a 200 or so megahertz uh, Broadcom uh, CPU. So what can you actually do with these old routers? Well, quite a bit, so don't throw it away yet. So DDWRT, go ahead and just search for that right in Google, jump out to the website. It is a Linux-based open source firmware that you install onto your old or even new router to give it additional capabilities, functionality, and really a, a better interface and up-to-date firmware. Think about it. This WRT54G, uh, it started production, as you can see here, from 2003 and ended in 2013. Now, the version that I have, like I said, V3, and there was definitely older versions and newer versions, uh, I'm thinking it was probably produced around 2005 to 2006. And it's firmware, yeah, it got updated for a couple years, but how many security issues are found every few years? Long story short, by installing DDWRT onto my router, I'm giving it not only the latest in security, right, but also new features, functionality, on quite old hardware, but good hardware, still solid. So what can you do once you have DDWRT installed? Well, if we jump over here to the documentation, you'll notice there's a link to the wiki. And the wiki has not only the installation instructions, but also some tutorials. And you'll notice there's quite a bit you can do with a upgraded router. Now, not all of these are gonna be available for every single router. For example, the DDWRT version that I installed doesn't have USB support for my specific machine. I don't have any USB ports. Uh, but you can see all the cool stuff you can still do here. Port blocking, you can do repeaters, set up VPNs, ad blocking, uh, SSH access into the router itself. You can even do some crazy stuff like running Python on it. Long story short, ton of cool stuff, right? But there's even more things you could do with it. Additionally, there's quality of service capabilities built into DDWRT. And that means that you can prioritize certain traffic, so on and so forth. Now, it's not gonna be the fastest, right? This old thing, uh, wireless G, so maxes out somewhere in the area of 10 megabytes per second. Or... So this old router isn't gonna be the fastest, right? It has 100 megabit ethernet ports, uh, but it has multiple of them. It also uh, has two external wireless antennas. So if we think about it, you could actually replace these with wired antennas and get some additional range. And that's what I'm going to do in this video is actually set this up as a repeater for my Wi-Fi. So actually put it in the garage and actually have it connect to my existing uh, Wi-Fi router and then extend the signal out with a different name. I'm going to basically create a new network connected to my old network. Um, this enables you to have a whole bunch of older machines that didn't come with Wi-Fi or had really slow Wi-Fi and use instead their Ethernet port to give them internet access. So a great way to just extend out your network and bring new life to these old machines. So the first step is we're going to actually go online and you can check in Google or go directly to DDWRT site or tomato. Uh, there's a lot of different versions of tomato now, a lot of flavors of tomato if you will. So jump out to DDWRT's site, select support, and search for your router. You can see that the WRT54G right there, version 3. There's a little sticker on the bottom of your router to check it out. Now don't download the V3 beta. Instead, first, well, you can download it, but first we want to go to the wiki, see if there's any recommended instructions. You'll note in the instructions that they have a recommended version to start with. This is going to be the one that we put into the Linksys firmware page. So jump over to your Linksys router, go to the firmware upgrade page, and use that sort of first step software upgrade. That's going to be your first one, right? Get it in here, upgrade it. Now, once your machine's all restarted, you're going to have uh, the DDWRT sort of starting software in there. Now take that V3 beta software 
download it and put it into the firmware upgrade for the DDWRT page. So you're basically going from Linksys to early version of DDWRT to the latest version of DDWRT. Now in the guides, they have a lot of other instructions where it says to uh, you know, do some hard resets and make sure that you clear all your settings before jumping through each of these upgrades. I'd recommend, why not? Reset your settings between each of these steps. It's a safe play. All right, housekeeping configuration stuff. Update your password first thing, right? Go do that. Next, I like to change my local IP address, especially since I'm trying to set up its own sort of network. Uh, 192.168.2.1. My main router uses 192.168.1.1, so if I want to be able to configure both or get to both admin consoles, this is how I do it. Boom. So uh, go ahead, save, and apply. Uh, when you actually get into configuring this as a, a repeater or something else, you can do a lot of save, 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 multiple different pages, and then apply all at once at the very end. That's what I would normally recommend. In this case, though, I want to make a quick change. First note, there's full instructions out there on the web. That's all I did, followed them, and then cut out all the places where I made mistakes. So let's get into it. Step one make sure that you go in and add a virtual interface. So what you're really doing is you're saying, cool, I wanna to connect to my current wireless, and that's what the configuration at the top is, and then the virtual interface is what is going to show up for you to now connect into for this particular wireless repeater. So go ahead and set it to repeater, uh, name it the same as your existing wireless network within your household, and then go ahead and hit save, right? You're not applying yet. Now, jump over to wireless security. Go ahead and fill in your credentials at the top for your existing wireless, and then the new credentials for this extended network at the bottom. Go ahead and save that. I use WPA2, you'll wanna probably use that as well. Once that is saved, um, you can jump over into security and turn off the firewall. Your main router is gonna be doing the firewall. You don't need that here. It'll just slow things down. Now, a couple different times I ran into like where the page just didn't load, so I went back to the router and then went back to the configuration. Um, who knows exactly what that is going on here, but just note, you just refresh and you're back in. Okay, so that's everything, that's it. So I went ahead, uh, saved all the configuration and applied. And you'll see the settings getting updated live, which is awesome. Okay, so I restarted, boom. There's extended Curtis within my Wi-Fi connections, entered in my password and, and, there we go, it's connected. Cool thing is I can now get into both admin consoles through 192.168.1.1, which is my uh, main router, as well as 168.2.1. So I now have access to the internet on my extended network and access to both of my router's configuration pages. All right, so I have the router right behind me. Let's go ahead and see how it performs. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and go up to the Wi-Fi, and you can see my neighbors have some creative Wi-Fi signals as well, but extended Curtis is here. Now that we're connected, let's go ahead and open up a new browser window. Do a quick test here to see if we've got internet. All right, we have internet. So now we can do a speed test. Let's see how the speed test does. Okay. Seven or eight megabits, which is right around one megabyte. Now this has wireless G, wireless G performance. And since I'm connecting uh, for the up as well as the down, it means it's cut in half right away. So theoretically right around 20 megabits per second should be about what I can get, but it's not also, you know, it's out in the garage. It's not perfect. Um, okay, so, you know, 7.9 down, three up. Let's go ahead and test again, see if we get any different results here. All right, eight down. And, oh, now we're getting a lot more up. 11 up. 10 up. Okay. So not bad overall. You know, being able to get eight down, eight up uh, for an old machine like this is actually, you know, it's fairly solid. So overall, performance is good. Well, it's okay. 
Let's go with OK. All right, so what's the conclusion here, right? Is it worth it to go out and grab one of these old routers and play around with it? Install some new software? Create a repeater? I absolutely think so. And there's a few reasons for this. Uh, positives. Well, let's start with the negatives first, right? The negatives, it's not the most performant, right? You saw eight up, eight down. Um, it, you're not going to be doing high performance work on this. But for example, my dad recently asked if he could get Wi Fi out into his barn. Yeah, buy two of these things, set them up as repeaters, and you can do that on the cheap and on low power. So performance is gonna be a negative here, but I saw one for $5 listed on Craigslist today. I've seen these at Goodwill for $5, right? There are dime a dozen. And to go along with that, the power usage is really low. We're talking right around five watts when on and active, which means thinking about power usage, you're looking at uh, if you're Basically, if you're around 12 cents to 15 cents uh, per kilowatt hour, you know, about $5 a year to run one of these. So double that for double the price in some places in Europe. Uh, so worst case, $10 a year to run one of these routers. So low cost, low cost for running it. Performance is also low to go along with that. But adding DDWRT gives you a ton of options. And for me, you know, being able to play around and just try out different networking uh, you know, skills and technologies is well worth it for the entry price. So absolutely go out and grab these. Um, you know, don't want to don't want to say uh, go buy them because then everything on eBay goes up in, in price. But uh, I didn't see any good deals on eBay. These are probably going to be more like a local purchase, honestly. So, hey, hopefully you enjoyed the video and learned a little bit something about it or got a little weekend project out of this one that you can go play around with as, uh, as well. Right. And if you did enjoy it, you know, feel free, subscribe, like all that other kind of fun stuff. Either way, have a good one and I'll see you in the next video.